HVAC 360 is brought to you today by The Construction Igloo. Bad weather slowing down your construction project? Wish you could just for once build inside away from the elements? Well, now you can with the construction igloo. This inflatable dome can be installed on most construction job sites in a matter of days. With an extra large entrance and an internal rigging system, this state-of-the-art environmental isolation system can keep you warm and dry all winter, getting you back on track in no time. Studies prove that projects using the construction igloo experience an average increase of 35.7% in total workplace productivity. So don't wait for spring. Get your construction igloo today. Welcome back, Matt Nelson here, your host for HVAC 360, helping you be the best and the brightest in the field of HVAC. We do that every week by sharing lessons learned and talking with industry experts, but we don't stop there. I want to encourage you to double down on your weekly helping of HVAC knowledge by hopping on over to HVAC360.com and joining my growing community of people just like you. Um, I rolled out something new, as you would know, if you listened to the last couple of episodes. Um, I rolled out a membership site, and this is still open at a deep discount for a limited number of people for a limited amount of time. Uh, just visit the website today to get more information. All right, so what's up for this week? This week, with a new year and all, I wanted to talk about goal setting and some of the things that we can do to make this the best year yet for you. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with some basic framework, and then I'm going to give some a little bit more specific examples of what we could do in our career of HVAC. So first, with the ground rules of setting a goal, first, number one priority Absolutely. Make it actionable. Uh, very specific. What gets measured gets managed. Uh, that's the that's what we say in our industry. And you need to be specific. So what, that, what I mean by that is that if you have a goal, say a typical goal for the new year would be losing weight. So if you wanted to lose weight, that's not a great goal. Um, what you need to do is you say, okay, I want to lose 10 pounds. I want to lose five pounds. Get, get specific about it because, it because then you can take that and you can create some, some mini steps that you can do uh, to achieve it. So step number two would be to write this down. Write it down in a place and you can review it daily. So it, always at the top of your mind when you're going through and taking a look at your goals. What this also allows you to do is allows you to diagram some steps uh, that will allow you to achieve your goal. Uh, and it's important to not only include steps that are like, you know, what should I do? But also think about who can help you along in this journey. Um, there are some people that are in your network um, that could help you out, steer you in the right direction, give you a shortcut, help you reduce the time to achieve your goals. And I think that's that's important because it's not only what you're doing, but who you're involving, who you're getting on your team to achieve these goals. Uh, and step number three, I think daily action. Um, it's very important that uh, we keep things going forward. It might be just small bites. Keep them realistic. You don't want to necessarily, you know, spend hours and hours each day trying to achieve your goals. I mean, if you want to really go hardcore, go go for it. You know, don't don't let me stop you. But for most people, you know, you need to be able to have those small wins in the right direction because all those steps, you know, really add up to a large journey. So you need to be uh, keeping those small bikes uh, and keep them realistic. So daily action, very important. All right, so for the career map, um, I think that it's important to, you know, every once in a while, kind of allow yourself some time to really understand, um, you know, where you want to go, where you want to be. Um, if you don't take the time out each, uh, you know, on an occasional basis to say, okay, where am I going? Where am I at in my career? Where, where do I want to go to? Um, I think you're doing yourself a disservice, and I think you're just getting into uh, a locked mindset of just repeating the same thing over and over again. 
So give yourself some time and space to think about where you want to be, where you want to go. Um, are you living in the place that you want to live in? Uh, is there an ideal place that you'd say, you know what, if I could live there, um, it would be, I, I think my life would be better. And, you know, for, for a lot of people, that might come for, uh, you know, a lot of different reasons, maybe be, uh, moving closer to family, uh, better weather. But, you know, that's one of the great things that I've always said about our industry is that anywhere there's a city, anywhere there's buildings, we can be there and we can, you know, support, um, you know, we can, we can find a job, an occupation, and we can build a career anywhere in the world. So that's one of the great things. So is that is that one of your things? Maybe, maybe not. So what other things? You, do you want to be a manager? Do you want to get into management? Um, are you looking to go from you know just being a uh, entry level engineer to being a project manager? Um, there's d- different steps that you want to take. Do you want to eventually become an owner? I mean, is this give yourself a, a long term uh, time frame? Do you want to become an owner? Do you want to uh, do you want to run your own show? Uh, do you want to become an industry expert? Do you want to become that icon in the industry of, you know, if we have a question about something in particular, we're going to go to you to ask those questions. Um, is that something you want? And, you know, are you earning what you need to earn? You know, is, is that something that's, that's you know, eating at you? Are you earning enough? Do you want to earn more? And what can you do to uh, justify that or uh, correct that? So I just want to say, a lot of these things, obviously, it's it's about increasing your value and and making you know the best you you can be. Um, if you want to be in the top five percent, um, and I know that you know I've I've said in the past you know you know three percent of people set goals and and actively you know uh, work towards them, and I also recently heard about this top five percent. Do you want to be in the top five percent? You know, it's a lot different than being the best. You know, am I the best in the field? Well, that's that's a pretty lofty goal. But am I in the top 5% or am I in the top 5% of my region? Um, you know, so I'm the go-to guy in, you know, the Pacific Northwest or the, you know, Southwest uh, of the United States or, you know, you know what have you, whatever ge- geographical area that, that uh, you work in. Are you in the top 5% of people engineers, testing and balancing, commissioning, are you in the top 5% of those areas? So, I mean, that, that's really achievable. Um, when, you, when you look at it and you think about it, 5%, that's, you're better than 19 other people. You are the, the top, you're, you're number one of 20. So that really makes it, you know, very achievable. I think a lot of people don't, you know, are, you know, see these jobs as jobs and not careers, so you can really go out, you know, go out and get after them. So that's really, I think, what you're, um, you know, what you need to be doing. You know, get get in that top top five percent. Once you're in there, then you can, you know, you can move up, whatever. But I think at least getting in the top five percent of your category in your region is something that's very achievable and you know for everybody to do. So. I think what this means is that we need to get better at our job, not just doing our job. I mean, that's the, that's the overall thing. How do you how do you become in the top five percent? You know, how do you you know climb the ladder, become a manager, own be be an owner, an industry expert? You know, really, if you want to be uh, if you want to you know go to a different city and get hired right away, what what you know what allows you to do that? And that's by getting better at your job every day and not just doing your job. So going above and beyond what you typically would be asked. So know what you can do um, on a bit-by-bit basis. All right. So once you've got that career map out, uh, I think there's some general, some, some big overarching themes that you're going to see that you can work on. Um, knowledge and skills. Knowledge and skills are, are one of those areas. Um, what do you need to learn? Is it, is it a technical skill? Is it a soft skill? I mean, never underestimate. Um, you know, you've, you've probably heard me preach about this before, but never underestimate the value of soft skills in what we do. Uh, we need to be smart about what we do, but soft skills can help you in so many different ways. So 
And how can you get better at your job? How can you improve the process of doing what you do? Um, you know, there's there's different things around you. You need to if you need to supplement your your knowledge or skills with podcasts. And I know that you can you can check this one since you're listening. You can check this one right off the bat. Um, you're doing more than most people out there. And again, to get to that top five percent, um, do you need to invest in books, courses, or conferences? Um, is that something that that you need to do to get into the top five percent to really achieve your goals? And, you know, to make it to make it very achievable. So another overarching theme that we have is networking. Uh, you know, the old adage is that uh, it's not what you know, but who you know. Um, I, I'm a big believer in that. And, you know, it's it's nice to develop a network that, you know, when times are tough, when you need a, a answer to a question that you're going to be able to rely on. You can reach out to people and they, they genuinely want to help you uh you know, succeed and, you know, just, you know, help you out in any way they can. You know, I mean, I, I guess, you know, the good old boy network, that's, that's kind of a, um, you know, thing that's, 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 uh, it's real, but I think it's also a matter of perspective um, because I don't think your uh, good old boy network uh, doesn't necessarily have to be all boys. Um, it can be, you know, something different. I think that it's just people who know each other, who network together, like to help each other out to get where they want to get. And, you know, so who that is, all is a matter of perspective. And I think that's changing on a daily basis. And you can affect that and you can create your own network um, that helps you out. So you need to be also, you need to be able to provide value to that network. Um, let you let them know that you're thinking about them. I mean, I, I guess a prime example uh, in my own career is that um, you know whenever I, I'm seeing uh, different construction projects that are in design, I might take that and I might throw it over to a uh, construction manager or a general contractor who you know that's that's what they do. I go, hey, you know what? You, hey, I'm just thinking about you. Here's here's a job that's that's coming on the streets that uh, you might want to be paying attention to. Um, sometimes they know, sometimes they don't know. So, but I think all in all, it's just the fact that you are recognizing them and you are trying to help them out, uh, that you are adding value to that network. Um, you know, that connection between you two, um, that really makes a difference. Um, and I, you know, again, I, I think one of the easiest ways, and I, people overlook it just because they're busy and, but I can't stress this enough, volunteering, you know, allocate your, your some of your time um, to do this in your career field, uh, wherever it might be. There are organizations out there. Most of these professional organizations are volunteer based, um, and they are never at a shortage for people to come and help out. You know, you don't have to be the best and the brightest to do that, but I think that. Um, it's very important that you do participate uh, because it, it can it can take you places that you couldn't even imagine. It could accelerate your career goals in ways that that you didn't even think possible. Um, and I think that it, it's just you know the time that you put in, the camaraderie that you build, building your network, um, just grows you know goes to show you by you know and grows by uh, leaps and bounds um, what you could possibly do. So let's give some prime examples of what you could do in your career. Um, and so if you wanted to relocate, um, you really want, I mean, obviously you could just up and relocate, no big deal. But if you want to go from one location to another, obviously, you know, doing some advanced networking certainly helps. Um, whether it be is, uh, you know, talking to uh, the local ASHRAE chapter where you're moving to, um, or it be, you know, the, the NEB or um, the AABC or, you know, BCA. There's a bunch of different professional organizations in the location that you're moving to. So you might, you might want to get to know them, um, you know, help them out in any way you can, maybe. Um, things like that. You might want to uh, uh, just kind of see what companies are out there, who's hiring, you um, 
you know, is there is there a possibility? And this is you know for some larger organizations, um, if you join up with a uh, a company that has a branch in the location where you want to eventually move, um, and you do a great job for that branch, and you say, hey, you know what, I really want to transfer to this other branch, you know, they'd be like, you know, more power to you, you know, and that's that's an easy transfer. And, you know, it doesn't even, it doesn't even, you know, it's probably the easiest thing that, that you could possibly do. I mean, it's not always available, but, you know, I can't imagine that uh, um, it could get any easier than that. So what if you want to be a manager? I guess, is that really the next step for you is my first question. Because if you're entry level, entry level engineer, um, you need to be able to determine whether or not, um, I mean, you really, I mean, you're not going to jump to manager from entry level engineer. You need to be able to run a project, um, run multiple projects, get that experience, get to know the people around you, and then you can take that next next step of being a manager. Um, But sometimes it's not available. So sometimes you're not going to have that chance to be a manager where you're at just because it's locked up for, you know, 15, 20 years depending on who the manage, you know, the current manager is, maybe it doesn't work out like that. So maybe you need to look elsewhere in your uh, community to see if there's a manager position open. Um, the one thing I will say is that when you be- do become a manager, uh, there's a couple of things. You're going to have to learn about finance. You're going to have to be pre- you know, uh, comfortable presenting uh, and selling services for your company. But ultimately, I think that one thing you should go in uh, in realizing if you want to become a manager is that you're going to have to learn to be a manager on your own. Uh, it's not something that you're, they're going to send you to a managerial training course off in some you know exotic location. That's that's just not going to happen. That's not how the industry works. Um, which is you know pretty sad that we have some. I wouldn't say poor managers, but managers that necessarily haven't gotten the training that they need uh, to be the best manager that they can. Um, so I think that's probably one of the downfalls of our industry is that you got to be a, you got to you know every manager you know treats managing like a project, and that's not the case. It's you need to be able to you know nurture, uh, create a nurturing environment where we can share information, where we can grow and get your. Uh, you know, the people that are working for you, uh, get them to where they want to be, get them achieving their goals. And, and that's what a leader does. It helps people achieve what they need to achieve in their career. That's what I think a successful manager is. Do you want to take the next step? Do you want to become an owner? I mean, that's that's a big thing that, you know, when I first got into the industry, I'm like, man, I, you know, I, this, this, the, one of the possibilities that, hey, I could be, I could be my own owner. And, you know, I mean, the reality is, hey, I achieved that. But, you know, it's, it's, it's really, it's really tricky. Um, you know, can you do it? I mean, if, if you're in a situation where you have golden handcuffs, where you're making just too much money that you can't afford to, um, you know, take a hit for an extended period of time, you know, maybe that's not for you. But again, you could probably work around that. Um, you, but things you need to do, you need to learn how to set up a company. Um, you know, what's the competition? Uh, are there other examples of companies like, you know, what you'd want to set up in your area um, or even nationally? Um, and can you sell yourself? That's really, you know, obviously the buck stops there as far as your earning is limited by how much you can sell. And that's always going to be an issue um, going into becoming an owner for your firm. Can you do that? Are you the person that can do that? If not, maybe uh, you know try to be the you know the best employee that you can. All right. So what about becoming the an industry expert? Um, you know, are you really in a position? to be that leader. And what I mean by that is that if you work for an engineering firm that just does retail and you want to be the next net zero guru, uh, maybe you're not in the right company uh, to be able to achieving those goals. So you need to be able to look around you in your community to see exactly what firms are doing that kind of work. Uh, and you need to get there to be able to start to be in the right spot uh, to become that industry expert. 
you know, you need, also need to know, you know, what's, what's your knowledge? Be realistic about what you know and what you don't know and how you can bridge that gap and what you need to do to achieve that. Are there you know, specific courses you need to take or things, uh, books you need to read or people that you need to, to connect with? Um, ultimately, you know, you, you, you want to be able to determine if there was a committee formed on your topic that you want to be an expert at, would you be at the table? Um, if there was a panel, would you be invited to that panel? Um, but who are the other experts? Again, this is, this is uh, you know, not necessarily what you know, but who you know. Do you know the other people that are experts in this specific topic that you want, want to get good at? Um, you know, befriend them, get to know them. Um, you know, even, you know, comment on, you know, on some of the work that they've done, um, you know, and just really get to know them a little bit better. And they're going to be able to give you some, you know, tips and tricks on exactly how to grow as an industry expert. So that's some of the things that I'm thinking of uh, when I talk about career goals to people. So, uh, thanks so much for listening. I hope this was helpful. If you know somebody who's looking for more information about uh, this topic, goal setting, career goals, things like that, consider passing this episode along. If you're not a subscriber, consider joining the growing community of people just like you over at HVAC360.com for more weekly goodness. And don't forget about the membership deal. Lastly, I would greatly be greatly honored if you consider leaving me a rating on Apple Podcast. I'll definitely give you a shout out when I see that show up. Well, that's a wrap for this episode of HVAC 360. I'm Matt Nelson, helping you be the best and the brightest in the field of HVAC. And as always, know what you build and share what you know.